CataractCoach.com. This is the best of Cataract Coach with our expert panelists, Dr. Rosa Bragamili and Dr. Deepinder Dhaliwal. You get, yeah, iris, iris changes. Oh, wow, exactly. interesting. All right, white cataracts, they're not all the same. Let's see what we got here. All right, this is a, a pretty juicy one. Look, it's like a ripe fruit. What do you want to do with this one? <laughs> so decompress. I only have two pairs. What should we do on this one? You have to decompress. Decompress. So how do you decompress? And don't say femto. <laughs> needle? A needle. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. I'll, I'll fluid to fluid interface on the Okay, needle. thank you. I feel oh. better. Oh. You told me to. You oh. just told me to do it. <laughs> okay, here. I'm, I'm going to decompress with a fago tip. Zzz, buzz in with that. It's been reported. It has been reported, actually. Yeah, yeah. I didn't make this up. Yeah. And then now, just kind of get some viscoelastic in, maybe. Oh. No. Oh, Jesus. So now I'm keeping the probe in, like DB says, keep the AC pressurized. Get that infusion pressure up. Fast. Up. <laughs> and now the second hand is going to get this rexus done through the side port. Oh, you're good. We'll make it ugly. Some kind of baby rexus. Anything. Just to have it continuous. Just to start the curve. Just something. And get past but I want to keep the infusion on so the pressure stays high. So you said needle decompression. Puncture the phago probe. Femto, zepto, can opener. Just wing it. I don't know. What do you like to do here? So you normally like needle decompression. Yeah. But give me a pearl so I don't mess it up again. Well, you needed more viscoelastic yeah. in there, like exactly. a dispersive to flatten. The other thing is verbal anesthesia with the patient, because I don't know if that patient coughed or moved at that moment okay. in time. And don't ask me how I know this, <laughs> because it's happened. And so now when I'm doing this, I say, don't move now, don't cough, everything's good. Talk to your anesthesiologist if you have one, or make sure you talk to the patient. Because if you're going with the needle and they go, <coughs> it's going to go. Okay, so there was no cough or anything. And there was a lot of viscoelastic in that eye. There really? really was. What was the patient's blood pressure? Was it high? It was, but you know, it's, like, it's one of these young patients where there's like no nucleus. It's just all fluffy stuff. And then the pre-op, the axial length, as you can see, or the, the, uh, the lens thickness is like 5.8 millimeters. So it's like a big ball of roundness now. And so here, I can, you can just try wing it. Here's a little bit older patient, it's a lot easier. But you can see, even as I'm doing this, and this is me operating, it just wants to run out on me. So I'm gonna have to use that little maneuver there and just kind of get it going. So I, wing it, it's probably not the best move. So I do like your idea, there's gotta be some sort of decompression. Mm -hmm. The challenge that I have here is just like, sometimes the young patients are the ones that get me. 30 years old, and I have these juicy, juicy white cataracts, long lens thickness. The lens thickness is like plus, more than five millimeters. This one actually has a nucleus, whereas the first patient was just total butter. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it just happens. Like I did a bilateral Down syndrome patient and her second eye was just so flat, white cataract. And the same thing, I went in. First eye went really well. Second eye, it just ran. Like there's yeah. nothing I could do. I couldn't save it. I couldn't do anything. And then it turned out she had a posterior polar. So I, oh, had, wow. an, I had an anterior defect and a posterior wow. defect. But wow. She, she was happy because she could see again. But yeah, like in a case like this, if life. you have a decompression, it makes life so much easier. Now this resident's doing a great job. I mean, better rexes than I did on that last case. That's a beautiful looking rexus. Dang. Yeah. But I think here, another important thing is to be yes. able to rock that nucleus. Because mm -hmm. a mistake I've made in the past is not getting all the lens milk out. You got to mm -hmm. milk this thing right. So here you aspirate from the front and you can see yeah. we did that for sure. But the reason I want to rock it back and forth is because there's also this liquefied lens cortex trapped behind the nucleus. Yeah. But in that case you showed, you said there's no nucleus. It was the first guy, it was just, not, it was just, it was just a, it was a ball of fluff. There you go. This one's older. This one actually has a little bit of lens density, has, a little, has some nucleus. But again, the idea is that there's liquefied cortex in, all around the nucleus. And so you want to get some of the lens milk out at the top, but then you need to rock this thing because you still have more trapped liquefied lens cortex behind it. So if we rock it and get all that stuff out, it's gonna make life a lot easier. And so once that, so once the bag's decompressed, there's nothing going on there, it's a lot, lot easier. So again, here comes a big incision now. There we go. And at this point, because it's decompressed, you can just get a regular rexus done. In case what, you're wondering why the page is moving so much, they're, they're playing music in the owner, the page is just enjoying. <laughs> don't play music, that's what, I don't like music. I love music. Never, I never. Do you, do you, so you do routinely then do this double rexus technique? Make a small rexus first, decompress, then another big one, or you don't really need that? As, assess how the capsule's behaving in yeah. your hands. If it's really tearing out, then make a smaller one, and then go, you, 
can enlarge it later. But if it seems like it's okay, then go ahead and continue. And probably the most important question is E there on the bottom. Do you spell capsular X with one R or two? <laughs> I've seen it both ways. I guess both ways is correct. I just like the one R. One R. One R. Okay, good. I thought maybe the Canadian thing you liked like two R's. No. No. Okay. Two we like tariffs. That's what we like. <laughs> All right, so I think, I think it's a very valuable technique to be able to do the lens decompression. I think it makes the case a lot easier. If you have fancy devices like a Femto and a Zepto, use whatever you got. Use what you brought. But I also even like the Faco probe to buzz in the capsule. If you're using Femto, though, because of the white, you have to increase your settings for penetration. Right. Otherwise, you will get an incomplete rexus. Right. And here's one with a fibrose capsule. You don't realize it. You get these fibrotic bands. What's your pearl here? How do you get past the fibrotic bands? So I actually have a case written up and described. We used an anterior vitrectomy probe. Oh, cool. Neat and, idea. And did a whole capsule rexus with the vitrectomy probe. That's a really cool idea. I so mean, here, we, I'm we just going to just, just, just kind of cut it, cut whatever. Yeah. We couldn't cut through it at all. Wow. It was so dense. Well, here's Femto. Like you were saying, if you don't do the settings, look what happened here. I, I'm using a fancy Femto here, half a million dollars to do a rexus. And now make the incision. And by the way, even if I use a femtum, I'm always using a diamond for the incision. I don't like the femtum incisions. But now look, the capsule's still attached. I'll go in and grab it. It's still attached like right there yeah. and there. So you're, you're correct. You've got to ch change those settings. And you did it right. You like um, umbrellaed it centrally. Right. Before you just pulled it all out. Umbrella it centrally and then pull it out. And so here we're getting, uh, again, this is double rexus. So doing a small rexus first and then decompress as much as you can, and then you can enlarge it to a bigger rexus. But again, really you want to get that small rexus first, so as long as it's continuous, even if it's ugly, it won't run out. Right. But these are still my favorite cataracts. I still love white cataracts. It's like, it's like the best miracle in all of medicine. They are, I, they're very satisfying. Isn't it though, gosh. Don't tell Medicare, but I'd do the white one for free. I did a white, cat <laughs> I, I did a white cataract, and I got the patient to 20, 25 on day one post, and he said, it's still a bit blurry. Oh my God. Put the cataract back in the eye. Go back to the OR. What? Yeah. I thought that was only Beverly Hills. No. Nope. That's GTA also, huh? Greater Toronto area. Wow. All right, well, here's the rest is done now. At this point, it's a lot, lot easier. So, again, these are really neat cases. If you think it's going to be more complicated, don't hesitate due to peri bulb or even a retro bulb bar. Here's a really, really milky one. Oof. Sometimes you just get so much milk. This is just like amazing, the amount of milk coming out of this thing. And so you may need extra viscoelastic. This is injected viscoelastic with one hand, systome in the other. Well, that's, can, that's why that FACO, um, it, and it has been described in the literature. FACO puncture? FACO puncture. It can, then you can just use aspiration and yeah. all that out. It's fast. Yeah. It really does work. Yeah, on that one, I like to use a single burst mode. You can program your machine, so you go to position three, it'll give just one burst of energy. And there's another paper that just came out that is going to the YAG laser and doing a YAG hole yeah. and allowing the fluff to come out before, like a few hours before, or an hour before you do surgery, and then, and then bringing them in. I like that idea, too. I haven't tried it, though. Yeah, that's interesting. Have you tried that ever? I have no, not. I have not, but it's described in the literature, and apparently it works great. You so you do just little like a puncture. small little yeah. puncture right in the center of the capsule? Yeah, and then it allows the fluff to come out and it all settles down and then you go in and do your rest. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to try that. I'm just wondering though, how that first case where the bag is so pressurized, wouldn't they just split it right there? I don't know. It'll be but a you're surprise in a, when you get to the OR. You're in a contained system there. You haven't decompressed the eye at all, yeah. right? Like you're, you're still... Okay, I'll try. I'll, I don't know if you I want to try it. You try it and you let me know. Yeah, but again, for me, what I, I just find these so satisfying, like you said, after you have a dense cataract like this, and you just clean this up and chop it, it's just like fun, fun, fun. Now, on a case like this, are you okay doing like any sort of presbyopic eye well too, or premium lens? Of course, if the anatomy is okay. If, if the calcs are good enough, even 